What's going on folks? Welcome back to another Scum video. I hope you're all doing well today. Ladies and gents, I want to talk a little bit about solo gameplay. Whether you're unfortunate enough to not have found a squad yet, or you're going to go at it solo, hopefully you'll find this video very beneficial. Now, before we get into it, as most of you know who've been watching the streams and the videos for a long time now, for the best part of five years that I've been following and making content on this, three years full time now, um, I predominantly push my videos out for the newer players. So if there's anything I miss, please post a comment below to help guys because we are a community and we do want to help the newer players um, get over that first step of the game especially especially as a solo player because obviously squads are always going to have the benefit now no base is ever unraidable that is you are always going to have a raidable base because people can use explosives and blow your base up and stuff like that now with the great divide that we have of private servers and official servers um, on official servers, flag elements are always going to stay the same, whereas private servers, you will have to ask or find out from the server owner, admins, or the community uh, what the flag element size is going to be. Now, the flag element size is basically what you can see here. All the elements that I have decided to choose, which I'm going to go into the base now and show you, um, all these are elements, so it depends how many you have. Um, and this is a huge part to your base. You do not want to make a base so big. Now, obviously, you can see here, everything you see in this base right now is 111 um, elements. 111, which you can see. There is some damage to this base because uh, I have had to re-record this because I accidentally blew some stuff up. There was a car in that garage, actually. Now, the first thing you want to think about as a solo player... The first thing you want to think about is location. Location is everything. Now, as you can see, I'm down here in the bottom right-hand corner. Now, you don't want to be placed by any roads. You want to be away from roads because when you do have people and larger squads that drive around the map, they're going to be going from POI to POI, gas stations and stuff like this for their resources, for their loot that they want to trade and stuff like that as well. So you want to be off the beaten path. Now, as you can see, I'm in Z0 down here in the bottom right-hand corner, and there is a map that I will link down below in the description as well for you guys to see. Um, you can go and check that out and have a look around yourself, but it's best to get on the map and experience it for yourself and get a taste of the different areas, different climates and stuff like that as a new player because climates is huge. Now, the Z sectors aren't the most popular because it's very warm down here and it's a different way of life compared to the cold area, for example. Now, if you're in the middle of the map, say C and Bs, like, you know, them sectors in the middle, um, it's pretty average, most of them areas are at least anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look here. Now I'm going to show you a screenshot on the screen right now before this wall was built. Now there's a reason that these this wall is built here. Um, because basically what's going to happen is, is, as you can see where I've built my base, I've got the foundations down there. I'm going to need an outer wall. And layers is everything. The more layers you have, the harder it is for people to raid. Especially if you push your base up to level 5. So as a solo, you really want to get your engineering. Engineering is huge if you're a base builder. You don't have to have that. You can just go and bury your boxes in random bushes and mark it down. Obviously, you can't mark it on the map officially yet. Um, but in my last Q&A I did with uh, Tommy and Lever, um, they were saying that eventually you're going to be able to write notes on your map and stuff like this. And maybe in the future it would be nice as well. I know it's going off topic here. Uh, but it would also be nice to be able to see your other squad mates around the map as well, whoever's in your squad. That would be great because, again, for new players trying to meet up, they have no idea. Um, even though they can see their marker on the map, it would be nice to sort of get into a squad and do it that way rather than having to meet up and then add into a squad. But that is subjective. Anyway, back to, uh, back to the point of this video. So I've obviously built walls here to protect my foundations. Now the flag here, do not build your flag on a foundation, guys. You want your flag to be outside on the ground and somewhere like this because it cannot be blown up. Um, your flag right here will be destroyed and your base will be open for everyone who's raiding because if they decide to place something on this here, right there, this foundation that this flag is sitting on, if that foundation gets blown up and destroyed, your flag is also destroyed in the process. So obviously we've got some um, we've got some doors and we've got gold locks as well and we also have the protection slots. Now I'm just going to set god mode here. I'm on my test server to do this video and I'm going to show you something here. So if you have advanced engineering, you're going to be able to build um, these. Uh, where is it? Enforced locks, gold, silver, 
and you've got iron. So you want to have enforced locks. Now it doesn't matter if you have 20, 50 or 100 doors with hundreds of gold locks. There are people out there and players who are very experienced in pushing these locks out. So there's different ways that you can get around this. Um, so obviously these locks here, you can only have two and two zappers. Two locks and two zappers. If I upgrade to metal, you are then allowed to have three. So you can only have two all the way up to um, barbed wire, I think it is. Or, or was that wood? I think I just went from wood to metal. Um, you can then use... Um, three gold locks in the process so as you can see nice little base here got a garage you don't need this garage um, but what you don't want to do is keep your base open for anyone to parachute in hence why I've got traps here because if anyone parachutes in here they're most likely gonna land on a trap you can work it out however you want I know that's not perfect but we're keeping the video simple here so I've got a little upstairs I've got a little place that I can spawn back to obviously I've got no gold in my balance and my account balance is ridiculous right now uh, for the purpose of this video we've got some boxes there and stuff like that as well so you can even do the same here you can upgrade this door which is already upgraded you can have three locks two zappers um, and obviously you can have a workbench here and you've got some storage as well that's all you really need uh, for a small base but again like i was saying location is everything guys so now if you want to bury your boxes do not bury them near the base and I'm going to give you this example here and I'll tell you why so my base is here now I, I say to myself all the best loot that I'm going to find where am I going to bury this all the best loot that I have I don't want it to get taken if I get raided so I'm going to bury the good stuff and save that for later for when I do need it or when I go out or whatever so over here is quite an obvious place down by the coast so you can see that I've got a box that's buried here I know it's not amazingly easy to see. Well, if you lay down, you can actually see the lump on the floor. So it's obvious that a box is there. Plus, it will tell you as well, even if it's not your box. Um, now, you can use blueprints. You can place blueprints around, which makes your life a little easier as a solo player to figure out where your boxes are. Um, so you can see, here's another blueprint here. I haven't actually placed anything. This is just for example sake. Um, but what I would do is I wouldn't build, uh, I wouldn't bury your boxes anywhere near the base, guys. Bury it far away. Very, very far away. Um, I'm talking 500 meters to 1,000 meters in that direction. If you run this way for another few minutes, then that is going to be a good place to bury your boxes. Do not bury it anywhere near the base. Because I am one of them people that can find boxes very well just because I've been doing it for so long. Um, and you try and you, you figure out where people like to bury stuff. Now, the hardest place to find boxes is in trees. Now, I've been running around this tree, but you can't see what I've got underneath. You can see I've got a buried box underneath that tree, and you're wondering how I've managed to do that. So what I've done, if I, if I just lay down and pop my head, hopefully, if I can just glitch into this tree a little bit, just to look, as you can see here. Let's see if this works. There you go. Right, you can see that there is a buried box within this tree. Now, how did I do that, you're going to ask? And this is also very difficult for people to find out where you've buried your boxes. So you don't have to just bury it over there. You can also bury it inside a tree. Now, find out what time the server resets. Just before reset, cut down the tree, bury your box exactly in that spot, and then wait for the reset. And then when the reset comes back, your tree is there. Now, a lot of squads will try to chop down trees, obvious trees. Obviously, this is an obvious one. It's a big tree that's going to hide a box. Um, little trees like this aren't going to hide them too well. I wouldn't even choose that one up there or that one or that one over there. Like I said, go very far away to bury your boxes. Now in a location like this, this is perfect. I wouldn't even choose this tree. I would go right over into the distance. Okay, so that's the burying boxes part as well. Now let's talk about caves. So where caves are. Now if you are parachuting into the map like most people do and there are players... And I'm just going to say it how it is because I want to help these. I want to help you guys. Um, people will parachute until they can get into a base. Now, this is why you don't see anywhere up here that a player can get into. So the only place that a player could get into my base here is literally parachuting into this area. But even then, they're not going to be able to do much because this is locked. There's nothing, nothing here for them to be able to do other than just log out or end life here and respawn somewhere else. So it's very, very important um, to make sure that if you are going to be 
building a base like this to what to to be careful and be wary of people that will parachute in from above as well not just you know we're not just talking about the ground we're talking about the air as well so people can get in from the air if they are lucky enough but with um caves and stuff like that if you're looking at caves people can't see that from above and they're not going to see your base from above as well until they get down and they may see a door in front of the cave so a cave is another place you can make a base or you can go into the ocean along the coasts and i don't know exactly where they all are but there are a lot of underwater caves that you can take stuff but again i wouldn't recommend it really because you're not going to be able to get much under there just because obviously the more you weigh you can't float you won't swim um and stuff like that too so there's a lot of reasons there's a lot of reasons why um i'm going through these obviously to help protect your loot protect you as a solo player but as you can see this is like there's nothing around here for anybody so it's a great place for a solo base um if you are a giant squad like a 10 man squad or whatever um or a 10 person squad should i say um then it doesn't really matter where you build you're going to have the players in your squad to help defend the base and stuff like that too now another thing is if i press t to open up ch uh, chat i can type in anything obviously if this is global no one's on this server at the minute it's a test server um now i would probably stay out of global chat keep yourself as quiet and as low as possible go through the shadows of the night and everything else you know what i'm saying keep yourself to yourself because what a lot of players tend to do is they will work out when other players are offline if they're planning to raid or they have found where their base is. So I know I'm giving out a lot of secrets here, but it's the way it is, guys. People prefer to offline raid, um, and that's just how it is. You know, if you've got a, a server like mine, yes, I'm going to do a little plug there. Uh, for my server, RKG, down in the description below for the IP and the Discord for support as well. Um, what we have on our server is we have two weeks of not being able to damage base elements. So for two weeks, literally, you could blow up, try and blow up walls, you could try and damage walls, shoot them with high caliber rounds, because obviously low caliber does nothing, um, and you won't be able to do any damage to it, which gives you time to build for two weeks. And then red pill comes, which is obviously what we do on our server, blue pill and red pill, um, and then red pill comes and you can now damage base elements with high caliber rifles, um, anything that practically works, like explosives and stuff like that too. But it gives you the opportunity to be able to build for two weeks and give you that chance to get your base up to scratch before the red pill. And some people's bases don't even get raided. And this is what I'm saying about private servers. Every private server is different on how they operate, including mine. So always be sure to check as well. So I'm not really sure if there is anything else that I can really mention other than the location, the burying of the boxes, push them far away, burying stuff into trees, making sure you have resources in your location. Like if you look south of here, we have a town so you can get water and stuff like that because water is pretty sparse in these areas down here. There's no rivers, which means if you go north, you can see there are a lot of rivers and lakes in the northern sectors, hence why they are probably more popular. Um, whereas down here, you are going to struggle for water um but also don't forget you have these bushes called olive bushes and you have eucalyptus as well but it's not as good as what it used to be but we have olive bushes here always the way when i'm recording i never find any olives or anything that i'm trying to show you guys it's just how it is um so there's none in that one let's have a quick look over here so i can just show you the olives because they do have water content and stuff and also down here the benefit of being down here guys is watch my fame in the top right hand corner there 1595 if i pick them up and put into my inventory every time you pick an olive up into your inventory it goes up by five fame points and then eat it so if you hold left control over these olives you can see everything that this these olives give and they are very good for you they do have a high level of sodium um, but they also have a high level of well i say high level but they have 19.1 grams of water which you can see there and the energy is 39.9 .9. and also at the same time these olives while living down here in the south um, if you hover over your stamina bar if you look there in the green writing at the bottom it says accumulated fatigue change to consumption so obviously fatigue is um, when you have run out of energy for a very long time and your body is tired um, after running so eating and consuming something will 
give you a constant um, a constant buff um, to the present debuff, which is obviously your accumulated fatigue. So you can see it's minus 3.9 stamina units an hour. Now with your tin of peas, that might go up to minus 70 um, and stuff like that as well. Even laying down on a bedroll is going to help massively. But you're not going to be able to set every skill high. So you're going to have to work out what skills you want as a solo player. Personally, if you're going to build, engineering is going to have to be at max. That's a must if you want to build. You can do camo high, you can do stealth high, and just live off of the land, bury your boxes in bushes or under trees, and not actually have a physical base like the one you can see in front of me here. You don't need to have this. Um, you can just live from town to town, but have a few boxes stashed around the map as well. That is also another play, uh, another way that you can play the game. So, ladies and gents, that's pretty much what all I have for you today with the uh, with the solo stuff. Like I said, there's going to be things that I've missed, and you're probably screaming at the video saying, "I can't believe you missed this." But it's a lot different when you're recording the video and you're trying to do everything off of the top of your head, which is what I've done here, as I don't like reading from a script or anything. I have a few notes, but obviously we've gone through a lot of things here for solo play. Um, so if you guys or girls have any ideas, please post them in the comments below. It would be greatly appreciated. I know this is a bit of a longer video, but there's also a lot of players out there that come into the game, and we've had a mass, mass amounts of new players, um, and they're asking a lot of questions, especially for solo gameplay. So uh, please feel free to leave a comment and help those out as well, as we all are a community and we want to see this game thrive. So with that being said, ladies and gents, please don't forget to hit that like button on your way out and hit that subscribe button as well. Also, we are sponsored by GG Host, so um, RKG is, and myself. So if you are looking to get a server for you and your friends or to create the big community server that you want to make for Scum uh, or any other game that GG Host supply, then be sure to use my affiliate link down below and use the uh, name Rakeit on the uh, promo code. On uh, This is really taking my mind off things. This is why I hate these little drones. Absolutely crazy. But yes, don't forget to use the, ter uh, the name Rakeit on the promo code and uh, before purchase and you will get yourself a server with 50% discount in the first month. Anyway, I completely ruined that and I'm not going to edit that out. So have a lovely day, ladies and gents. Stay safe and I'll catch you all Friday for the next stream. Take care.